led by Wes Moore, whose team was picked eighth in the preseason. They have a chance at the number two seed today. And early on, a loose scrum for the basketball. Wake Forest will start with it. Back-to-back -back road wins in the ACC. First time since 2012 for the Demon Deacons, who began the year 0-14 in the conference, but playing good basketball right now under Coach Megan Jebbia. You see NC State starting off in the man-to-man, -man, and Wake Forest is going to run their motion offense. A lot of five out, a lot of Princeton principles to try and get some backdoor cuts and hard cuts to the glass. Under second-year coach Megan Jebbia, 60 points a game for the Deacons, so Alex Scruggs airballs a three. It's senior day here at NC State, honoring River Baldwin, Madison Hayes, and Mimi Collins, all part of the starting five, including Baldwin fresh off a double-double on Thursday. Airballs her first shot, and that goes out of bounds. That'll actually stay here for NC State. And I think NC State, they have an advantage in the post today with River Ball when Wake Forest does not have a good matchup for her. So I think you're going to see NC State go inside early and often. Those are two veterans. Baldwin, 140 career games, and Alex Scruggs leads Wake Forest all time. 146 career games. Both are out of eligibility. Here's Saniya Rivers early on. And a quick miss. That loose ball will go out of bounds. Sometimes on senior day, it's a little hard to get everybody's emotions under in, in check. And, and uh, you've got your family here. And so the big thing for NC State is trying to get off to a good start. Overcome those emotions. Here's Wake Forest starting five. Kaya Harrison, 142 career games. Scrubs 146. Two major veterans. But remember for Wake, Joel Spear, top scorer from a year ago, transferred to Tennessee. So it's a young scoring roster. Scruggs sits on an island with six. Elise Williams is averaging 19 a game in February with a good pass to Kaya Harrison and the deflection. Great vision there by Williams. That's the kind of things that Wake Forest is going to need today. NC State fresh off an overtime win over Syracuse. Puts them in a spot with a win today. They earn the number two seed behind Virginia Tech. Here's Isaiah James off a nice double screen, but misses. Hayes the board. And that one rolls out. Both teams a little slow early offensively. Right, they're getting good shots on both sides. They just haven't been able to finish. Here's Wake working it down low to Scruggs. Challenges Collins, but that's off. These teams are a combined 0 of 7. Sometimes transitions the way to sort of get off of that streak. NC State trying to push. Final game of the regular season. Wake's locked in the 14 seed. Down low, Baldwin challenges Coles. And that's one area Wake Forest loves the defense of the redshirt sophomore, Malaya Coles. Yeah, and, and she, she's a physical body under there, and she got River a little bit up the lane, made it a little bit tougher of a hook shot. Harrison in attack mode. Coles left alone. And finally, our first points, Wake Forest breaks the drought. Big thing in a game like this for NC State is to try and establish their dominance early, get a big lead, because the longer Wake hangs around, the more confidence they're going to build. Here's Sanaya Rivers, fresh off 22-8. and eight. There's a steal for Williams, the Raleigh native. Played high school up the road at Wakefield High School. Now chucks a three, and the homecoming a bit short. Madison Hayes, who pregame announced she's returning for her fifth year here at NC State. An all-conference defender from Chattanooga, Tennessee. Huge cheer from the crowd for the Tennessee native. James, nifty look, and Baldwin's there. How about the vision of James? Yeah, that was it. They had an isolated pick and roll on the weak side there, and Wake Forest had nobody that could help. Perfect dish by Isaiah to River. NC State averages 15 assists a game. That's in the top five in the league. Virginia Tech right now, nearly 20 assists with Georgia Amor dishing the rock. Amor's a special talent. Big reason why Kenny Brooks Club won their first ever regular season title in the ACC. Harrison down to six. Tough matchup, and Rivers is all over it. Two seconds left, and the bank is short. Scruggs the board, no. And look at this fight for the basketball. Comes out to James. Behind the back. Rivers blocked by Williams. And the intensity here early, Derek's picking up. Absolutely. That was quite a recovery by Williams, because I thought I thought that Rivers tonight was going to be just be all by her lonesome. We'll take a quick look here. It's a nifty move by James. Here after the block by Collins, loose ball comes up. This was a nifty move right there for James to get the fast break started, but couldn't get the finish. Wake Forest defensively only allowing 60 points a game in these last two road wins. So Baldwin challenges Coles in a strip. 
It's not just for great shopping deals on Sundays. Coles is pretty good. <laughs> yes, she is. She, again, a little bit undersized against River Baldwin, but you can see NC State is really focused. We've got to get it inside, and I think for Baldwin, when she makes her turnaround, her ball, the ball is low. She's got to get it high so she can get it over the defense. NC State a one of seven start shooting. As James, power dribble. Hold on, that's offensive. And Kaya Harrison, the seniors there. Yeah, great job of establishing position. James with the floater and then landed into her. Sometimes you might get the basket and say it was after the release, but no basket for the pass. Wake Forest, one of eight on this end. How did the Deacons find some offense here early? Well, I think th they've got to have a little bit stronger cutting, really make NC State move from side to side, and then maybe we've got Williams on a drive and dish could be the best look. Williams has been electric, nearly 20 a game in the month of February. But now we begin March, last day of the regular season. Here she's looking to drive. Williams with five, great screen. Williams in a traffic, and that's how you draw it up. Absolutely, that's, that's, that's what Wake needs right there. Get the ball in Williams' hands and let her to create. She's the one X factor today that can put Wake in a position to win. Kaya Harrison again active with her hands. 142 games. That's like a decade of college basketball, but she's playing hard here early. Yeah, with, with the COVID, the extra year, there's a lot of players that are setting records for games played, and when you've got that much experience, you're not intimidated coming into a crowd like this. Sold-out crowd, Reynolds Coliseum. Last year's matchup in Winston-Salem, both teams struggled in the 40s. It was a low-scoring, defensive-minded game. Very similar start here in Raleigh. So Conley chucks up a three, and that's short. Sanai Rivers runs the break for NC State. Gets all the way to the bucket, and that one rolls in. A one-woman transition crew. Yeah, there's that transition offense we mentioned recently, that if you're struggling in the half court, you've got to push the ball, see if you get an easy look. Williams with a dribble display. That's a bit forced. Good defense by Hayes. Now Rivers. What a pass. James the shot fake, and Isaiah gets her easy money, cashing in on a Sunday. Yes, and again, more transition. Wake Forest was out of position. Great pass across to James, and the crowd's starting to get into it. Wake on this end, one of its last seven. Fresh off a four-point loss at home to Clemson. So Williams lets it go. It's been very Williams-centric here early, four shots. Yeah, they need to probably get her off some screens or some ball screens a little more often. Try and get her some freedom for Madison Hayes. Rivers on the switch. Good hand Scruggs, the Fayetteville native. Alex Scruggs on the move. Does not have the help. The infantry was back behind on defense. Very few whistles in this game. I think everybody's a little winded waiting for that media timeout. There's Coles losing the ball. She's been an impact first-year player here for Wade. Down low, Williams, 1v1. Shot fake and a swap by Baldwin on her senior day. So we'll take a media timeout. Both teams a little gassed here early in a two-point difference here in Raleigh. Greatness is a feeling, a moment. Changes in this game, including a last-second whistle forcing overtime and then Derek, the resolve of NC State to pull it out. Right, that was the kind of situation where it is so hard to get Bach off the map because they thought they had won the game, called the foul there with a tenth of a second, but they went back to the bench, they regrouped after a couple missed shots. They really started attacking the glass. Madison Hayes with a big basket here to go up by three. And then uh, a defensive play. stop right there at the end. And just huge, huge win to try and secure that number two seed to knock Syracuse off of that number two spot. That win Thursday was NC State's seventh ranked win of the year. Them and UCLA have the most in the country. In a game like this, you're not playing a top 25 opponent. How does NC State lock in as there's a turnover for Wake? Well, a lot of times coaches will say, you're not always just focusing on the opponent, you're focusing on yourself. And it's about being intense, playing good defense, trying to establish yourself going into the postseason. And that was such a thrill. You saw Fair was, was a phenomenal player for Syracuse, but Rivers, Topped her in the end. Two of the favorites for ACC Player of the Year. Them and Liz Kitley of Virginia Tech. It'll be a fun debate the next couple of days. It really, I mean, Kitley has been so good. It's hard to imagine that she wouldn't get it, but that's not to downplay how good Rivers and Fair have been this year. It's just a very talented ACC. Here's Elise Williams on the drive. She's been a scoring machine in February with a loose ball. Liz Kitley, the reigning Player of the Year, and of course, 
Deja Fair coming from Buffalo. This Syracuse team was picked ninth, getting them up to number two at the moment. That's been an incredible season. Yeah, Coach Lega Jack from Syracuse. It's been a really impressive performance for her. She'll get a lot of votes for Coach of the Year as well because, like you said, they were picked ninth, and it wasn't a lot expected of them having come off a ninth place finish last year, but they've been very impressive. NC State in this game, one of its last 10 shootings, so James can't end the run. And a loose ball to Conley. Much lower scoring game than we probably anticipated to this point. The Brisbane, Australia product, Katie Diebel checks in. Redshirt freshman, excellent shooter. At nearly 40% from three. Yeah, she went five for five in there, winning against Pitt from three-point land. Conley on the spin, Scruggs to the board, and draws the foul on Collins. Alex Scruggs is like a trash compactor on a Friday, man. She collects dust and makes things happen down low. Yeah, and she, she's undersized in, in her height, and they even listed her as a guard, but she's definitely playing the post, battling, getting the offensive rebounds. Megan Jebbia calls her the heart and soul player of this team. Really good on the rebounding department. Yeah, I mean, as you mentioned earlier, 146 games in her career. She's got a lot of experience. That is saved by Reagan Conley and a fresh 20 for Wake. Deacons haven't scored in three minutes in a defensive-minded first quarter. And Connolly steps out of bounds. Coming up this week with the ACC tournament, that's just a week and a half away, believe it or not. Our last regular season Tuesday doubleheader on the men's side comes up. At 7 Eastern, North Carolina hosts Notre Dame. And then Georgia Tech will head to Winston-Salem on ACC Network. Big win for Carolina yesterday over NC State. That solidified them as a one or a two seed right now. Yes, it did. And, and a tough break for NC State having that eight-point lead at halftime but couldn't finish. They're desperate to get a marquee win to try and make it in the NCAA tournament. As Zoe Brooks attacks the line. Great time to River Baldwin. Zoe Brooks and Sanaya Rivers now the first tandem in six years to have 100 assists for NC State. Yeah, and we've seen it in those last two baskets. River with the kick pass to, to James and then now Brooks. They've got excellent vision, both of them. Brooks causing traffic on that end. And that duo in 16-17, it led NC State to a great year. They went 23-9. This year's team's on the 2-3 seed range in the latest Charlie Cream bracketology on a miss. I think if NC State can win today and get to the finals of the ACC tournament, I think two seed is, is their future. As Conley's off on the three, here's the young Zoe Brooks. 100 assists and counting. And Hayes hangs on to the ball, but a missed layup. Wolfpack 30%, Wake Forest 11% in this first quarter. I think both teams are feeling lucky to be in the game the way they played on offense, but it is the defensive intensity that's picking up as we get into March. Katie Diebel battling another true freshman, Zoe Brooks. Here's Madison Jordan's first touch, the freshman from Mooresville, nearby product. Conley for three, and Wake needs a bucket from deep, or oh, six early. Wake entered this game hitting almost seven threes a game. And Conley, even though she's tall, she's primarily a spot-up three-point shooter. First minutes for NC State's Maddie Cox, the freshman forward. Baldwin out of a triple team, and nobody can buy a three today. State's missed both. And if you're Megan Jibby, you've got to be a happy camper with this start. Absolutely. I think that Wake Forest, you just want to stay in the game, stay in the game. And even with only four points, they're right there in the game trying to get a... A big shot here, probably a ball screen for Williams. Maybe trying to kick it to a three-point shooter in the corner. The Raleigh native Elise Williams with seven. Sprints in a ball win. Challenges River with a flip. And a foul on Wake. That was Coles pushing off. Baldwin with a great job of knowing her scout there. She did not leave to go to a post shooter that wasn't going to shoot a three. She stayed home, was able to force a tough shot. Now, 1.8 here. This is one of those things on film you can work on. See if you can get a half-court shot here. Rivers oh. elects to milk out the clock. Come back, and she just made an announcement. A huge cheer from the crowd there. So the other two seniors are out of eligibility. This was a big month in March for NC State. With a win today, they're in the number two seed in the Atlantic Coast Conference. Collins on the board, and the senior goes right to work with a second chance. Senior to senior. It's like a pass off the rim there from Hayes to get it to Collins. NC State on this end held Wake to their second lowest point total of the season in a quarter, four points. Yeah, we talked about the defensive intensity. They've been solid, forcing Wake into a lot of tough shots. Alyssa Andrews has come into the game for Wake, the Woodbridge, Virginia product in her 89th career game. Katie Diebel 
Tough move in the lane, and Diebel is short. Loose ball to Diebel. The more you can run her off the three-point line. Well, Diebel's left alone, and a miss. Wake is 0 of 8 from deep. That's her sweet spot right there, but tough miss for Wake. Now it's Zoe Brooks, a candidate for freshman of the year in the ACC. Her and Hannah Hidalgo will tally up some votes this week. Hidalgo has set the freshman record. 11 freshman of the week honors this year. So then Hayes is blocked by Williams. If I'm a coach right now, I've got to talk about driving to the basket, driving to the basket, try and get to the free throw line. Diebel forces one up, and Wake can't buy a three. Two at 24 start shooting. Playing hard, though, on this end. Collins in her senior day, backs it out, and misses the jumper. Where do you find offense here if you're Wake? Boy, I, you know, Williams has really tried to, to drive and, and score and finish. I think I want to look more for a drive and kick, because you've got a lot of shooters on the floor that can make it if they're open. So I think I'm looking for open the lane, drive, kick. This is Wake's lowest scoring total since a loss at Duke back in February. Rivers the steal and an open court foul. That has to be an intentional foul right there. It was just two-hand push from behind. It was clearly, yep. An intentional foul here on Katie Diebel. So yes, three throws and the basketball. Yes, yeah, Sanaya gets the steal right here on the kick out, and she's got a couple of steps. You'll see. Here's the kick out. She gets it. She's got a couple of steps on Wake. And really, you just got to let her go, but they went with the two-hand push. <laughs> Even with two points in the ball, you prevented a layup, so it's debatable, but Sanaya's a pretty good free throw shooter. See if she can make her pay. Well, in this baseball game of a score, every point matters. Exactly. 14 combined. As Rivers now has three points. Managing the emotions of a senior day if you're NC State. Three starters on her pregame. Well, I think not just the emotions of senior day, but the Thursday night game was so intense. I sat there behind the bench, a couple rows behind the bench, and just watched the team and how intense they were on earning that big win over Syracuse. And I think it's just a little bit of a letdown right now. They just got to keep working through that, trying up their intensity some more. The Wolfpack will sub in freshman Lacey Steele out of Edmond, Oklahoma. She'll give Hayes the breather. So three freshmen on the court for Westmore, and could in the electric Zoe Brooks if that pass is tipped. And when you talk about going to Greensboro for the ACC tournament, to win a championship, you've got to win three games in three days. You're going to need some contributions from Steele and Cox and Brooks. You can't just do it with the five starters. So this is good to get them some minutes to build their confidence. NC State on a five of 18 shooting start. So Rivers sizes up Williams. That's an elite matchup. And last touch by Mimi Collins. Okay, Williams is listed at 5'9", but she seems to play so much bigger than that. Really gave Sanaya some, some trouble. And Sanaya elevates so well on that jumper. Shouldn't have many players to do give her trouble on that. True freshman point guard, Katie Diebel, brings it up the court. And now Riley Turkoff has it. The product of New Jersey, great shooter. Williams looking to buy a bucket. She's one of eight early on. What has State done well to frustrate her? I mean, they're really putting a lot of, they're being physical with her, not letting her cut cleanly off these screens. Good find for the freshman Brooks, and Steele is short. Neither team can buy a three today, all 13 combined. Yeah, it's definitely a bricklaying fest so far. Building a sold out Reynolds Coliseum, but no offense to show for it. Try and build a, an extra wing to Reynolds with all the bricks. Here's Andrews, wanted Scruggs in the lane. Turkoff on attack mode and a foul. Good drive there from Riley Turkoff, the freshman. Yeah, really nice. She was a top 100 player coming out of high school. Wake Forest with the, here we're gonna take a look at her. There's the drive, Maddie Cox tried to get over. You know, one thing that Maddie may learn that she'll learn from River Baldwin is sometimes she can slide over and take that charge. That's something River's really good at. But instead, Maddie went for the block and ended up committing the foul. So Cox with her first exits, Baldwin returns. And Wake Forest has not scored a point since the five minute mark of the first quarter. That streak continues. Turkoff came out of high school, the number 29 guard in the country for Megan Jebby, who brings in a great recruiting class, top 100. Right, right, a, a top 25 class, and, and the first time in over 10 years that they've had multiple players from the top 100 in Turkoff. So the streak is broken. An eight-minute scoring drought is finally over for Wake. 
Madison Jordan, the other one. Here's a freshman for NC State, and that one rattles out. Baldwin the board into a triple team, and it's a WWE scrum. That'll stay on this end. You know, and as a coach, sometimes you're like, oh, maybe we should penetrate more. Maybe we should kick out. But I'm seeing a lot of good shots are just not falling right now, and eventually they will start to fall. This is the intensity that Don Staley's defense lives on. They lead the country in fewest points allowed. Let South Carolina to a national championship playing this hard on the defensive end. That time, though, State goes right over to Mimi Collins. That's a nice inbounds play right there to get a, a look deep in the paint for Mimi. Another foul on Brooks guarding Katie Diebel. You know, one of the stats I was looking at, NC State in the first 25 games gave up 67 points or less, or more than 67 only four times, but in the last four games, every single game, more than 67. They've got to get back to that low-scoring defense. So he enters this game fourth in the ACC in scoring defense. Right now, Albany leads the country. 52 points a game. Coles gets pressured. Remember, Wake's only made two shots from the field today. Diebel spins, and she carried. There's a turnover. Yeah, trying to make a spin move again. If you can run her off the three-point line, that's always going to be a good move for NC State's defense. But just to finish that point, NC State has given up more than 67 in four straight games after only doing it four times the entire first part of the season. Wake Forest, or sorry, West Moore will have to be pleased with his defense here on Wake. Steal on the shot fake. Right back to Rivers, who's wide open and not get the first three of the game. She has worked so hard on her three-point shooting since she came to state her freshman year at South Carolina. She just hit one. She's already up to 19 for this season, and she's such a good driver that just a little bit of three-point shooting just makes her impossible to guard. Sanaya has outscored Wake. She has seven points in the first half. Williams part of this motion attack with Princeton elements. Trouble breaking down Westmore's defense tonight. Coles is stripped, and there's Rivers doing everything. The bucket, the steal. And then Williams poked, picked her pocket. Here in the five-minute mark of this low-scoring first half. Wolfpack with a win or in the number two seed in the Atlantic Coast Conference Tournament. Baldwin kicks it. Everyone touching the rock and a little extra there. Collins to travel. As we'll take the media. Tonight, Rivers kickstarting the Wolfpack offense here early. Yeah, she's really shown her leadership. And here going into the break, you see the kick out from Lacey Steele. She lines up that three and nails it to give NC State a big 12-point lead. Junior guard Sinai Rivers making a case for all ACC. Off to a nice start with seven points tonight. And this game Thursday, she took over against the Cuse. What has allowed Sinai to take this next jump late in her junior year? Well, when she was a freshman at South Carolina, she was playing behind so many All-Americans that it was hard for her to build her confidence. But when she came to NC State, she, the, the coaching staff believed in her. She got a lot of minutes, and she has really worked. As I mentioned earlier, she only hit one three her entire freshman year. But to have the confidence with under two minutes to go to shoot a game-tying three against Syracuse just shows how much she's grown. And she is just an all-ACC talent for the Wolfpack. Tonight, Rivers has outscored Wake Forest, who is shooting 2 of 25. Hard to find offense in the second quarter. Three freshmen on the court for Coach Megan Jebbia, whose team made the NIT last year. Right now, they're searching for a third straight road win in the conference. Diebel under constant duress. Here's Turkoff. James Reitner grill clock to two. Scruggs got to go. And Scruggs lost track of the clock. What's impressed you about Westmore's defense today? They're just, in, I know we keep saying this word intensity, but they are really up on the Wake Forest players, not giving them any space to drive, not getting any good passing lanes, and just being focused, knowing how important this game is to win. Here's River Baldwin down low. Stayed on this end, shooting only 30%, but James dekes out one. A loose ball to Turkoff. So neither team shooting the lights out as we hit the final four minutes of this first half. Yeah, Westmore not going to be that pleased with 17 points at this point, but the defense is made up for it. Turkoff for three. That one's short, and Collins has it. Wake entered this game hitting seven threes a game. They're 0 for 12. 
James, a candidate for comeback player of the year, best season after a six-point a year freshman campaign and a foul for Baldwin. Well, when she was here as a freshman, she was instant offense off the bench. She didn't always get that many minutes, but she took over the starting role real late in last season, and from that point, she had a 20-plus game at Virginia Tech, I recall, and, and then the very first game of the year, she had 19 points against Charlotte in the first quarter. And it's just taken off from there. I think she's a great candidate for most improved in the ACC. James in her last five games, 20 points a night. Shooting it right around 55%. And her ability to make plays off the dribble has taken State to the next level. Yeah, she's such a tough, tough person for other teams to defend because she's been very consistent from the three-point line, but she's so quick off the drive. And she can make some acrobatic shots. She's... She's known for sort of some, some leaners that are difficult, but she knocks them in. If you want to top five of playmakers in this league, Tania Latson, Deja Fairnate, Isaiah James, those three just do so much one-on-one. -on -one. Right. Conley on this end. Wake Forest needs a bucket and gets one, sapping a three-minute drought. Wake Forest going to try and put some full-court pressure here just to change the momentum. That was Wake's first field goal of the second quarter. Rivers behind the back. Said, keep an eye on my ISO game. Give her nine. Right, and that time she didn't have Williams on her. She had a smaller defender, so she could just elevate. She could do that all day if she wants to. You see Madison Hayes begging Conley to go left. His Wolfpack defense has been tenacious today. Only seven points allowed. Wake entered this game scoring just over 60. You can just see how hard they're fighting through screens. Right there, preventing the easy look. Now Conley has it with four. Down to two, Conley's doubled, no foul, and a shot clock violation. Here's Rivers against Harrison right there. It's a smaller defender, and she can just stop and pull up. You know, I almost feel like she needs to be more aggressive in her scoring because she is such a difficult person to defend. Her and James are one of the best backcourts in the country working together. Wake commits a foul on the drive, only a 13 foul. NC State in this quarter, they found some rhythm offensively, but it started with their guard play in this quarter. Yeah, exactly. They're, they're driving, they're kicking out. Um, also, they went into River Baldwin a couple possessions ago. She made a nice kick out, so they're really looking for their teammate and being unselfish. Here's James, and she's yet to find some offense. Only two points tonight. Yeah, those are shots she's used to making. You can see a little bit of frustration on her face after that shot. Williams turn the Raleigh native is way short. It's a one and nine start for Williams Rivers Is fouled by Williams so free throws here in a game where offense has been hard to come by Sanaya starting to take over She really is and I think that's something that she needs to look to do as you go into the postseason because She's so quick with the basketball that no matter what team they're playing in the country She can get herself a shot and so I think she needs to have that aggressive mindset to lead her team. Rivers continues to outscore Wake in this first half. She has 10. Back to back games with 20 points for Sunaya. Starting to heat up at the right time as we gear up for the conference tournament this week. Right, and when you think if they get the two seed, Virginia Tech get the one, you think about that potential rematch. Virginia Tech doesn't have somebody that can guard Rivers off the dribble. Big three from Jordan, and that's the first triple for Wake today. Freshman out of Morrisville, North Carolina, Panther Creek High School. So she's another another local product for the Deeks. Hayes steps into a three. Unable to trade triples. And that'll go to Wake Forest. Wake Forest down 13 here after making that triple. They've got to think about getting it under 10 points to try and feel confident going into halftime with a minute and 40 left. A Wake team that's shooting 13%, but hanging around because of their defense in this first half. State holding a Baker's dozen advantage. No room for Williams to operate today. The Raleigh native. Down to six. Conley off the screen. Steps into one. And Conley starting to heat up. Give her four. That's, that's two baskets from her from that same distance right there. A little mid-range jumper off of a ball screen. Here's Rivers. Baldwin, great position, challenges Scruggs and a foul. That's a mismatch the Wolfpack need to exploit. 
Right, and Scruggs is an undersized post under there. And she's prone to foul trouble, fouled out six times this year. I think NC State, when the game first started, the game plan was go into Baldwin. They sort of got away from that. But I feel like that's still an advantage that they can exploit as this game goes along. The ACC Women's Basketball Tournament begins Wednesday at Greensboro Coliseum, just up the road. With every matchup but the championship game on ACC Network, head to ESPN for the finals. First round coverage begins Wednesday. And that's where Wake Forest will be set as a number 14 seed. And Conley says, hey, who needs Greensboro? I can shoot it from Raleigh, too. That's right, and she is an excellent shooter. She got those first two to go in. Wake Forest has got it under nine, under 10, as we mentioned. State needs to try and extend it. Collins for three. Unable to answer, and a loose ball, last touch by Williams. What has allowed Wake Forest to crawl back into the second quarter? Well, their defense, they've, they've continued to force NC State into some tough shots. Also, a little bit of luck there. That was a great look by Collins that most of the time will go down that rattled out. But I think offensively, instead of just having Williams force it all the time, they're letting some of their other players find some looks, particularly Conley. State up nine. Another look for Collins, that time a miss, and Harrison in a tussle for the boards. Megan Jebbia wanting tempo here. So the fifth-year senior stops, pops, and draws the foul. 142 games in Harrison's career. She knows how to make plays like that. Right, and that was a good read by her because there was about a five-second difference in the shot clock. So there was no need to hold for the last shot here. She's got Zoe Brooks sort of gets a step on her. Forces the foul, and now she'll get to the line for two to cut into this lead even more. I think this is a surprising score for those around the country just peeking in, particularly with how low NC State's only scored 24 in the half. Wake Forest has drastically improved this year, plus 10% from a year ago at the free throw line. They're now at right around 73%. I'm going to round up, 72.9, yeah. 73 with that free throw. Yeah, and so that's a big part of this five-out offense that they like to run is to cut to the basket, to try and drive and try and get to the free throw line and take advantage. But that time a miss, three or four from the line for Wake. NC State could hold for the final shot in one of its lowest scoring first halves of the year. I think you got to look for Sanaya coming off the ball screen here and either drive or kick. Kaya Harrison so active in her final regular season game. Right in the grill of Rivers. Good double team Scruggs. Rivers in the traffic, no. Tip drill, off in time. Not that one. What a tussle, a fight. It's a WWE Raw matchup for 20 minutes. Give a lot of credit to the Lake Forest coaching staff because this team was 0-14 in the league and they're still playing hard, won two of their last three and they're in it against a top 15 NC State team. At least Williams, the rally native, starts the second half. Great dime to Coles and a block. Good hands by Rivers. Rivers showing that leadership again. On this end, the Wolfpack only shot 25% in the first half, and a foul here on Elise Williams. That's right. her second. James got bailed out just a little bit there. She got caught in traffic. Williams got caught with the reach in, though. You see Williams fighting for call. She's playing with some, some toughness, and she's trying to drive her team in the second half. Well, especially being a Raleigh native. You know she wants this one more than any other game on the schedule. NC State's won nine straight meetings in this series. James behind the back, no. And that goes out of play. Just been a cold night for offense so far. Right, and those are shots that James has, has consistently made throughout the year, but she just can't get him to fall so far. Wes Moore looks a little bit flabbergasted over there on how to get a bucket. That's an SAT word, my friend, with Derek Jordan. I'm Evan Budjovic. Final day of the regular season. NC State with a win earns the two. With a loss, they drop to the four and a block for Collins. How important is this game seeding-wise for NC State? Oh, it's tremendously important because NC State lost twice to Virginia Tech. They're sitting at that one seed. The last thing you want to do is drop to a four and have to see them in the semifinals. Ideally, you want to go through that, that two slot and just have a better matchup as you work through the tournament. The winner of Louisville Notre Dame is in that 3-4 position, depending on how today unfolds. As Scruggs jacks up a three, and that's off. Wake is 2 of 14 from deep. You've got Syracuse in that slot, too. You could be looking at a 2-3 matchup of Syracuse and NC State, which would be a great rematch on Thursday. Rivers, Baldwin down low, and that's a blocking foul. Tremendous finish from the senior. Great job with the pick and roll on the isolated side. We saw something very similar early in the first half 
Here we'll take a look at it. See, Baldwin was all by herself on that side. The help defense is late to get there. Conley, just a perfect pick and roll. That little pocket pass by Rivers. It looks so smooth. It's not as easy as she makes it look. Tonight, Rivers over 100 assists. She's now seventh in the conference. Georgia Amor leads the ACC in assists. Nearly seven a game for Amor as that ball goes out of play. Well, and it's the vision of a point guard in moments like this. Oh, it's incredibly important because you're trying to you're trying to get good shots. You're trying to get good looks, and and from the moment that Sanaya River stepped on campus last year, you could see how good her vision was with the basketball. And she wasn't a natural point guard necessarily, but Westmore saw that vision and said, "We've got to have the ball in her hands." And a former five-star player for Don Staley at South Carolina. This has been Sanaya's team the last month. Fresh off a 20-point game, she leads the club with 11 today. Here's Sanaya with the rock, calls her own number, and a nice jumper. That's NC State getting Sanaya ball. Right, and an excellent set coming off the uh, out-of-bounds play right there. Sanaya came off the double screen. Wake Forest tried to jump it, and Sanaya just faded to the corner for the shot. So Sanaya has 13, Wake has 16, if you're keeping track at home. Deeks have seven from Conley early. She's been great from three today. Williams has been held in check, one of nine shooting. Elise goes for 10, and her toughest look falls. That was quite a difficult shot. She was able to get on the other side of the rim, almost used that as a protector to avoid the block shot. The Raleigh native came to play. Tremendous effort from the guard, and pokes that one out of play. Here's a look at that last play by Sanaya. You see Wake Forest jumped the screen there. Williams was trying to get the steal, so Sanaya faded back to the corner, had the open look. Great job of reading the defense. Rivers is at 40% shooting, but here in the last month, she's up near 50%. Developing at the right time as the ACC tournament begins Wednesday. Baldwin down low. Good switch by Coles. Hayes finds it and finishes. A hard-earned bucket for the senior. Madison Hayes, we've talked about her being the glue to this team. We're going to take a look. Baldwin sort of lost control right there on the double, but Madison Hayes is always just in the right place at the right time, was crashing for a possible offensive rebound, gets the garbage. Not only does she get the ball, she gets the finish and one. Her parents credit and age rate here in attendance as Hayes announced she's coming back for her fifth year. That's the level of toughness the Wolfpack needed today. Yeah, she's such a leader for this team. We talk about it with Rivers, but Hayes as well. Her intensity has been so strong all season, and that's a big boost for the pack next season, knowing she'll be back. No room for Reagan Conley. Very active hands. Brooks is in her grill. Down to six. Wake's got to get a look. No easy options. Williams on the switch. Step back in the face of Hayes. Wow, with the shot clock going down, she didn't have much choice there, but a step back three against one of the best defenders in the ACC. Great shot. Her handles are next level, making things happen one-on-one. -on -one. Now Wake needs a stop on this end. Good hands by Harrison. And an offensive foul. It's an illegal screen on Baldwin for first foul. You know, going back to Williams from Wake Forest, you got to know that she's all ACC level talent, but being on a team that's finishing 2 and 15 in the league, she might not get the votes to make the team or one of the teams, but she has my vote. Well, on my ballot. We're going to talk about that later. Yeah, exactly. She's she she's got that talent and so you're seeing it shine today. All ACC selections come out Tuesday. And with Liz Kitley well in line for back-to-back -back player of the year, so it'll be curious how it unfolds. I think Sonia Rivers has a chance at first-team all-conference, and Williams looks to join her there with free throws. And one of the problems for NC State's balance, if you will, they've got five players that average double figures, and so the scoring is a little bit more spread out. And if you just look at the stat sheet, you might not think Rivers, oh, she's one of the top five, but when you watch this team play game after game, you see what a special talent she is and how much impact she has on NC State being the number two seed in this whole league. Muffin McGraw mentioned at halftime, you look at this state roster, it's hard to tell who's the most improved player because everyone's taking a jump. Five and double figures, one of 10 teams in the country to do it. And Elise Williams on this end, she's been cooking since the calendar turned to February. That's third of the ACC in scoring in February, 18 a game. Yeah, and she just continues to heat up because she had 31 and 28 in her last two. First time ever with back-to-back -back 20 points for Williams. Right now she's at nine, so could get there in the second half. 
If Wake's going to get on a run, they've made the quarters the last three years. They need Williams to cook. Right, right. She's got to have monster games for this team to win. Because they lost three starters from last season, she's got to be the one. Extra passing here for the Wolfpack. Rivers kicks it. Here's Collins. Bangs in the three. You can see NC State is in a much better rhythm in this third quarter. Rivers gave up the three-point shot to drive and dish and get a better look. That's the Wolfpack's seventh assist on 12 buckets. Williams nifty to the rim. At least Williams with 11. How about the finish and the drive on that one? Right, a great job just getting through the defender and then reaching up a round ball one to avoid the block shot. Great job. She has Jamal Crawford as dribble and drive news. Back when he won sixth player of the year with the Clippers. Right. She just makes so many different plays. Right, she's just so creative with the basketball. Here's Collins short on the three. Williams has it. The electric Raleigh products. And so far, every time NC State feels like they might pull away, Wake Forest keeps inching back. Elise joined the 1,000-point club this week. Splits two. Another nice pass, leading to a missed three, but a good look for Conley. That's how Wake Forest has to get this offense rolling, is let Williams cook. Baldwin's cooking down low on the mismatch, and Baldwin tumbles for a bucket. The senior with a tough left-handed finish. It's an ice skating show here in Raleigh early. 11-point game. Jordan makes it eight. That's her second three. Another top 100 player for Wake right out of this Raleigh area in Morrisville. Fantastic freshman class. The highest rated class in Wake Forest history. 25th in the country. Collins, the senior, challenges the young Jordan. And then James bangs in the three on a bounce. That's the shooter's roll right there. That's from shooting in this gym. 10,000 times probably getting used to that roll. State's made six of its last seven. Wake's made four of its last five. Now we have an 11-point game. Williams off the screen, uncontested. 13 for release. No help defense right there. I think Rivers was trying to make sure she didn't give up the open three, but great, great drive off the ball screen by Wake Forest. Eight straight games and double figures for Elise. And then Sanaya fakes out everybody for two more. That's an elite hesitation dribble right there. Back and forth, offensive thriller after slow first half. Right, I think these teams at halftime, they finally started to get warmed up. Harrison's turn, give her two more, back and forth we go. Uh, NC State really Harrison. having a lot of trouble with that ball screen right now. They might look to hedge or trap a little bit more, slow that, slow that driver off the corner. James' turn, that's off, and a foul on Isaiah. So heading to break. These teams have combined for 33 points and now Wake Forest starting to cook. He has one through nine all solidly in the tournament and, and that top four seed is so huge. NC State, Virginia Tech, I think are comfortable in being there, but I think whoever gets to the semifinals of the AC tournament, we had Louisville or Notre Dame, can get that next host as well. Good ball to Scruggs down low and Wake Forest don't sleep on the 14 seed. They're hanging around here in Raleigh. And there's another one of those just ball screens with Williams. NC State's just not handling it very well. They're going to have to look to make some adjustments. Syracuse, Tech, and NC State have clinched double buys in the tournament. It's still up for grabs, that final spot, as Wake gets the rebound. Most likely the winner of Louisville Notre Dame today will get that fourth one. Conley in transition with a third three. What has Wake done to flip the script here, Derek? You know, the, the, the pick and roll obviously has given State trouble and just confidence. Like, they believe in themselves. And I felt like in that first quarter, they looked a little defeated, but definitely not in this third quarter. Baldwin swings it. Collins' turn responds for three. That's a senior being a leader right there from Baldwin to Collins. This is their last game in this building, at least in the regular season. And they don't want to go out with a loss. 28-3 of the season for Collins playing pick and pop with their senior partner. Not just homecoming, the seniors work together. Right. Williams off the pick. She fires and hits. 15 for Williams. Double figures in the second half. Yeah, and she, she struggled a little bit shooting that first half, but she's really starting to heat up. That time Collins passes up the three. Right, it was early in the offense, but after hitting one, I thought that might be the way to go. Hayes makes everyone fall over, and then a scramble. Addison slow to get up. She got hit hard by Scruggs. Now Williams in her bag. Not much room to operate. The Raleigh native steps back and is cooking on home turf. You can see in a big basket right now. You could just tell 
Westmore is going to have to go to a timeout, but you could just tell that Williams, when she got that basketball in transition, she wasn't giving it up. We'll take the timeout. Wake Forest oh, back within three. They're the final day of the season. You know, he come to my home for summers when it came to helping people. She's trying to take over the game. She's such a good mid-range scorer. You're seeing those pull-ups. To, to go from two points to 17 points in the first eight minutes of the third quarter, that's crazy. And Wake Forest overall, they started this game 2-25, and 25, but they've been shooting 71% in this third quarter. So NC State's going to have to step up the defense. Good hands by Debo on that end. This lead that was as big as 15 is trimmed to three in the last few minutes. See the Wolfpack feeding Baldwin down low. Scrubs wanted a charge instead of bucket. Yeah, I think that was a, a bit of a flop there. Good no call and he gave River Baldwin an easy bucket. Debo on this end is off and Rivers the board. Now Sanaya running the break. Good pass to Hayes. She misses the three. That's a shot she normally makes. An excellent three-point shooter this, this season. Wolfpack had struggled from deep. 4-12 today. Scrubs down low. You see Wake passing up good shots for great shots. Then Scrubs kicks it. And Connolly traveled. Maybe that time a little too much passing. Right. I think that... Sometimes you can get too unselfish and you end up walking yourself into a forced turnover or an unforced turnover there. And elements of this Princeton-based offense, you're trying to drive and move the ball, and then sometimes you have to flip that mindset to score. Right, exactly. That Sometimes you give up. If it's a really good shot, you're trying to find the perfect shot. Sometimes that's just too much. Chris Mooney at Richmond, maybe the godfather of the modern Princeton offense. They're about to win the A-10 this year again on the men's and women's side. Great hands by Williams. Now this offense is moving and grooving. Elise swings it, open three. Jordan hits. That's her third three. There's a Jordan in Chapel Hill, and there's a Jordan here in Raleigh cruising. Yeah, no relation, but uh, both from Raleigh. Living up to the name. That's, that's right, for sure. absolutely. 30 years later, young Jordan for Wake Forest. Madison Jordan putting on a show. Rivers here. Brooks attacks the defense and free throws. And NC State's got to keep doing that, keep attacking. I still don't think Wake Forest can handle them off the dribble, particularly Brooks, Hayes, and Rivers. So, and even James, I think all four of them can drive. Zoe Brooks, a candidate for freshman of the year, or sixth player of the year as well in the ACC. Both are up for grabs. As on Wednesday, the Nothing But Net crew, they'll be in Greensboro, as a matter of fact, for the Ally ACC Women's Basketball Tournament. That's the first round coverage. Highlights, analysis, and interviews. You can watch it on the ACC Network. And there's a college game day coming out on Sunday of Championship Sunday in Greensboro. So watch the whole crew all week. And NC State has had three straight six player of the years, trying to get an unprecedented fourth with Brooks. Wake Forest has flipped the script, 28 points in this third quarter. Jordan, another three, bang! She has got the confidence right now, and it's a one-point game. Rivers just short. And don't sleep on a 2-15 and 15 Wake Forest team. 31 points in this third quarter. Yeah, after only 16 of the is Known for shooting three-pointers. A top-five season all-time in three-point makes. And seven today. Now Hayes on this end. Sizes up Wake's defense. And a good block. Cole's there. Wake, you just see the confidence building and building. NC State's adjusted to a smaller lineup here. Try and prevent some of those threes. Wake shot five of eight from three in the third quarter to crawl back into this one. And a risky pass for a turnover. Only Wake's ninth giveaway of the game. But it is, and, and that's a testament to how well they've been playing. And it's, it's interesting to see Westmore's adjustment here that going into the game, I thought that Baldwin would be the advantage, but right now they're deciding to go small to match up to what Wake's doing. James given space. zaya has been held in check with five points. What a pass to Brooks. Another extra pass. And then Hayes into the trees, forces a jump ball. 
the activity of Wake Forest defensively. That time, Jordan, very impressive. Right, they're collapsing a little bit on these drives. They're sort of daring NC State to kick out and shoot some threes. But lot, right now, NC State shot fake and drive, shot fake and drive, and ended up just going into traffic. So Katie Diebel, the Australian product, brings it up the court. This is a Wake team that's won two of its last three after starting 0-14. Williams' turn. Wake nearly had the lead right there. All right, that's her shot right there. Just run, rimmed out. Good shot fake. Hayes again. That's off. And NC State shooting 35% tonight. Jordan's been feeling herself in this second half. She now has an ACC high of 12 for the freshman. Yeah, they've switched Madison Hayes on Jordan to try and prevent any more threes. State's best defender. Williams on the mismatch. Missed the jumper. Coles the board. Wake for the lead. Has it. There's about 75 Wake fans in the building, and that's the only noise you're hearing right now. Huge bucket for the Deeks. They told you the triples were huge. Eight threes for Wake Forest. So James in her bag. Iso ball. Can't hit. Remember, NC State with a win earns the number two seed with a loss. They drop to the four. And Diebel gets contact. That time, no good. Here's where championship teams have to step up. NC State needs a bucket. Who are they going to go to? Going to start with Rivers. Sanaya 1v1. Blows by Jordan. And a nice bucket. Good response from the captain. Right. And that's the leadership you're looking for. She took her time. She got the hesitation dribble with the spread out offense. She got all the way to the rack. Wake Forest scored 16 in the first half. The offense has exploded here in the second. Williams off the pick. Wake's been living on these mismatches. Jordan couldn't get the look there. Hayes was on her too much. Williams calls her number and shorts. Well, every shot in the second half looks good for Williams. She has 17. Brooks on this end. And the extra pass a bit heavy. That'll stay here. All right, looks like they got a tip there on that pass across. I, I thought Collins may have touched that last, but the refs say NC State ball. Yeah, and they can't review it until the last two minutes of the fourth quarter, so it's just on what the refs see. Our crew NC led State. by Tom Donahue today. NC State going back to the big lineup with Baldwin. So Alex Scruggs returns for Wake. That's a huge size mismatch. James. You're right, Wake's collapsing everything defensively. There's three defenders on Brooks who heads to the free throw line. Well, even if you just look right at the, the end picture there, there's four Wake jerseys right by the basket and all of NC State's on the perimeter. Does that make you think about the three-point more after this replay? Yeah, let's take a look here now. Zoe with the, with the drive and Debo, De, Debo, excuse me, could not keep her in front. They're going to get two free throws, but... I really think you got to trust your three-point shooting that Collins, Hayes, James, when these drivers go in, spot up and be ready for a quick shot. This is one area NC State has excelled. 75% in free throw shooting. And in the last five minutes of games, when the game's 10 or less, Brooks is at 80% from the line. Really good in close moments. Very impressive for a freshman, too. Here you got to imagine Wake's going to go ball screen with Williams. Williams, a lot of space. She scored two in the first half. Now has 17, and Scruggs gets tripped. A timeout, Megan Jebby. That's a smart call. Very smart call. At this point in the game, the possessions are so valuable. We'll take this timeout. Six minutes to go here in Raleigh. Wake Forest hanging around in a tight two-point game. He's here. She's bringing Wake back to life. She really is. You see here in all these opportunities, she's got River Baldwin's man is sending her a ball screen. She's attacking. She's getting to the glass right here, sort of a step back hesitation. But she has been in her back. She's been getting any shot she wants right now. And NC State's going to have to figure out a way to pressure her coming off of those ball screens or just count on their defender to fight through those screens to not give her those looks. Wake trail by 16 in the second half. Williams is single-handedly brought Wake Forest back. 17 points, now dishing it to Scruggs in a traffic, no. NC State off an overtime win Thursday. They're grinding here tonight. What a time by Brooks, and then Collins blocked with a foul. 
Right Brooks there. Brooks got her at the very yeah. end. Yeah, great pass by Brooks. If Collins could have just caught her a little more cleanly, I think she could go up before the defense got there. But she does get the foul on Scruggs. Those are free throws 15 and 16 for NC State. The winner of this game, seventh in the conference at 75%. What a really good free throw shooting league. No league better than the ACC. Right, right. Very confident there by Mimi. As a conference, 70% overall. Late in these games, it'll matter, especially in a tight one right here. Right, and that's something that's going to pay off when these teams go into NCAA tournament time. Back to a four-point difference as we near the six-minute mark. Wake has not won in this building since 2017. Jordan deep. That's a bit off. And Baldwin elects to save it. Mimi Collins on Jordan there, just a little bit taller defender. She had to go a little higher on that shot. This is a 6-0 Wolfpack run in the last two minutes. Great, Great position. Baldwin through the trees. No. Great the, set there by NC State. Just couldn't get the finish. The undersized Wake Forest Demon Deacons. Only minus three on the glass. That's a win if you're Megan Jebbia. Her clubs won back-to-back -back road games in the conference. Harrison crossover. Good hands by Brooks who's diving on the court. Harrison here with eight in the double team. Again, it's Brooks active. Jordan with four. Tough look, no. And then Brooks saves it. Great hands by the freshman. James to the bucket. The runner is good. Really good body control there by James. Isaiah James with seven. And Wake Forest using a timeout. Give a lot of credit to Zoe Brooks right there, playing hard defense. She was an unsung hero in that Syracuse game on Thursday night. You saw it again right there. We'll take the timeout here in the fourth. Okay. Zoe Brooks making her case for a great defensive play leading to a bucket for NC State, who last year had Saniya Rivers win sixth player of the year. Brooks is earning her case today. And Williams into traffic. That shot was tipped. Here comes the freshman. What a pass to James. Are you kidding me? What a play by the Wolfpack. The pass ahead. And then James with a reverse flip. Let's take a look at it. Philip Rivers-esque here at NC State. What a pass. And this finish is underrated there. A reverse layup with the foul. The crowd loved it. Huge, huge basket for the Wolfpack. Okay, get your sixth player of the year votes out for Zoe Brooks. All the voters that haven't turned it in, if they're tuned in right now, they can see what an impact she's had for the pack this season. NC State's won the award four times in its history. Maybe a chance at five. So Williams is called for an offensive foul. River Baldwin drawing the charge for the 25th time in her career. She is so good at drawing charges that NC State has started tracking offensive fouls drawn this year in their notes. That's her 25th. Really impressive for a big five, a big post player. What has fueled this 11-0 run for NC State? Well, the transition a couple of times, it's, it's the defense on one end with Zoe Brooks and then the transition, James getting out ahead. That's an illegal cam check on Collins. Yeah, maybe the little foul. There. Yeah, maybe the little screen there. Tough, tough play there for the pack because you could just feel the momentum that one more basket could be the nail, but Wake Forest shooting all of its last six, a three and a half minute drought here in Raleigh. Oh, Rivers nearly had it. Williams the extra pass and a steal. Good hands by the pack. They're going to go in transition. Brooks swings it. Collins short. Scruggs the board. The collective moan from the crowd. That was a big shot. Big miss. Williams sitting on 17, but yet to score in this fourth quarter. Who can help out at least? Conley tries it. Feeble. Good crossover. Deeble challenged and hits. Stops a four-minute drought. Mostly known as the three-point shooter. She had a nice shot fake and drive and no help. Brooks could not get the block shot. Actually, big bucket for Deeble today. Probably NC State a little lucky they didn't call a three-point play there. Rivers on the switch with Williams. Baldwin the extra pass. Collins finally knocks one in. 
That senior to senior connection once again and the crowd rises. NC State plus nine in this fourth quarter. Searching for the number two seed in the Atlantic Coast Conference. Here's Scruggs, daring her to shoot. Baldwin active hands. Here's Sanaya Rivers to the bucket. Could be the cherry on top for NC State. Yeah, and she just salutes the crowd. A huge bucket puts NC State up 12. The defense has really come to play in this fourth quarter. Holding Wake to five points in the fourth. Williams into two. That's a block. Only two fouls here for NC State. And how about Saniya Rivers taking over? Yeah, she's just known for this. The long arm of the law, they like to say on the radio broadcast, she takes it all the way for the layup. I thought she might even go for a dunk there, but... And you can tell this team wants to pull off that number two seed. There's some energy here in Reynolds today. Yeah, and, and, and just listening to them on Thursday night in the huddle, I heard with two minutes to go, this is for the second seed. This is, this is for second place. They know it's on the line, and they want it. In the words of Will Ferrell from Flint Tropics, we don't want fourth place. We want second place. That's right. And that double by in the tournament. Wake's tournament position is locked in. They'll play Wednesday night at 6.30 as the 14th seed. And then Williams is short. What a second half. Maybe not enough for Williams today. Now for the first time, NC State is going to just slow the pace a little. Try and just lead this clock. A 16-2 run for Westmore's club, who was picked eighth in the preseason. They'll pull off the number two seed with a win today. Rivers in the two. Collins so huge in this fourth and add another three for the senior. Everybody on the bench and on the floor just knew that was going in. 15-point lead for the pack as the seniors shine. Down low, Conley, nice response, and Wake snaps an 8-0 run. That's a great little set right there by Wake. Now Wake running a bit of a press. The Wolfpack, four double figures today. They're one of ten teams in the country that have five or more averaging ten. They're flexing their muscle today. They really are. You see why they're so dangerous going into March is that anyone can step up and hit the big shots. Reynolds encouraging this group. What a dime by Brooks, and Rivers hits a three. It's raining triples in Raleigh. Scruggs on this end, tightly contested in a foul on Rivers. Well, I tell you what, NC State's offense has just caught on fire. You're seeing the drive and dish. You're seeing the confidence. and. Here, let's take a look at Brooks with the kick out. Ooh. Rivers hitting the huge three in the fourth quarter, just like she did last Thursday. She has four assists today. That's her best pass. Yeah, that Actually, was her, sorry. Her baseball pass was her best pass. That's, That's her true. second best pass. Well, and as you keep mentioning, sixth player of the year, you're seeing why. She makes such a difference. Her coming out party was that UConn game, the second game of the season. Oh, hold on a second here. Oh, if Wake Forest missed this next free throw, free Chick-fil-A for everyone in the building. Yes, this is a, definitely a crowd favorite. Alex Scruggs for Chicken Nuggets. Oh, oh clutch. Only thing that's gone wrong so far for the Pack fans in this fourth quarter. That snaps a 22 to three run. It makes a lot of hungry campers leaving the building. Brooks with her fifth assist. Oh, hold on, Baldwin missed it. Baldwin got caught right in the front of the rim. Couldn't get the right angle. NC State plus 15 in the quarter. Jordan, that one rattles out. Good look for Wake. Kaya Harrison, great hands. The fifth-year senior playing in her 143rd career game. Blows into James and good hands defensively. Nice defense there by James. I love the effort of Kaya Harrison, right? This is a team that's 2-15, and 15, not a lot to play for. Harrison's putting her body on the line. Right, and they've been playing hard, and they, I mean, this is a game that they could have just not showed up for, especially after being going down 23-7. to seven. Let's take a look at Mimi Collins here, the senior, getting a huge ovation from the crowd, hugs from the assistant coaches. Had a big second half as well. Double figures, and then Saniya Rivers doing it again with an open court foul for Williams. They called the touch foul on the breakaway there. 46 seconds left and see if Coach Moore tries to get River Baldwin out of there for another ovation as well. He's going to say with Senior Day a chance to sub out his next two seniors. Yeah, particularly 
We know Madison was honored today with her fourth year, her senior. She's getting her degree. She'll be coming back. River Ball, when she's been around for Wolfpack fans, if you remember the start of the ACC run of three straight ACC tournaments, she played for Florida State in that championship game, guarding Elisa Tunane, and now it's come full circle all the way back to being with the Wolfpack. Well, you just mentioned it. Lizzie Williamson will sub in for Baldwin after this next free throw. And Rivers missed it, Hayes the board. This exemplifies Madison Hayes, a ton of effort, and the jump ball keeps possession. And how about the impact here, River Baldwin this year for NC State? Oh, it's been tremendous. We're going to take a listen to this crowd real quick. Her final home game in the regular season here for NC State. They are so appreciative, and she has stepped up so much. I think she found her home at Florida State. She couldn't find her role, and she came here, and, and it's really a huge reason why NC State's going to finish second in the ACC. That's a five-second violation and a Wolfpack turnover. This club now is the number two seed in the conference. What's their ceiling? How far can they go in that ACC tournament? Oh, I think I think they can win it all. We haven't gotten a chance to talk about our favorites. I think it's hard not to pick against Virginia Tech, but NC State, they've got so many different weapons that they don't need. And here, we'll take a look at Madison Hayes. So proud of her and her time here at NC State. She'll be back, but still getting honored as a senior. All three seniors off the court for the Wolfpack, who have pulled ahead in this fourth. But quickly back to the tournament. NC State can beat anyone. Williams ends her night on 17 points. And then well, a foul here on Wake. And I'll tell you, I've seen the way Wake has played. They just beat Pitt. They just beat Georgia Tech, who may be their first round opponent. It may be Virginia. But there's no reason that they can't go to Greensboro and get a win and really give somebody some fits. Last year, they beat the number five seed, Florida State. And I think they've got a shot to make another run. This team is playing much better than their record would indicate. It's been three straight years. A 13-seater higher has won two games. So there's definitely some elements here for Wake as Aaliyah McWhorter comes in, the Cincinnati Ohio product. Right, when you've got Elise Williams handling and distributing and dishing, she can win a game by herself in Greensboro. Isaiah James in the Wolfpack. She's got 10, one of four and double figures for the pack today. NC State will open as the two seed, and their tournament begins with a double bye. So they'll open up Friday night at 5 o'clock. Virginia Tech, the reigning champions, look for back-to-back -back titles. And remember, State's won three of the previous four championships. And the, the seeds are such a jumble because everybody's so close, but they could be looking at a Florida State or a UNC in that quarterfinal, which is going to be a tough game. So Diebel on the drive. That freshman able to finish. Nice bucket for Diebel. You know, Florida State lost here in overtime back in January, a game that you called. And then UNC, of course, NC State split. So there are no easy games when you get to Greensboro. And a late foul on Kaya Harrison. NC State wanting to secure that top four national seed come Selection Sunday. This is a, a prime performance, 25-win regular season. And a good way to end the year for Westmore. Right, and NC State with seven AP Top 25 wins this year. That's tied for most in the country. They were 11 on the most recent committee reveal. I think they can, which is a three seed. I think they can work their way back into that two with just at least get one win in Greensboro, maybe two, and depending on the way the rest of the country comes out. And so the advantage to playing in this building sold out first two rounds is huge. Last chance here for Wake Forest to will gear up for a 14 seed matchup on Wednesday night. There's a kickball, Lacey Steele, the defensive effort, and that's been the story for NC State here on Senior Day. A 25-win regular season, a great defensive effort.